My name is Omar Ramadan and I'm the head of the Secretariat of the Radicalization Awareness Network. RAN is a network of practitioners. We have over 1,000 people uh, active in our network now from all 28 member states. RAN was launched in 2011 by Commissioner Malmström. Um, she wanted a network of practitioners, first-line practitioners, people like teachers, youth workers, health workers. Uh, why? Because the issue of radicalization and violent extremism at that time and still is being discussed very intelligently by policymakers and academics, but the people that are actually encountering the target group, the first-line practitioners, uh, their voice is not being heard a lot, uh, and therefore we created this network so that they learn from each other and that they feed into the policy process. This process of radicalization, it starts with exploring who am I, what's my place in the world, what's my group, what's my religion, um, and in that search uh, they make themselves seen. And then once they become convinced of their ideas, they do not need to share that with their teacher, youth worker, people from the neighborhood that do not share their violent and extremist ideas. So then you need to worry. What we try to achieve is that people that encounter the target group in classrooms, in community centers, are aware of radicalization, learn how to detect it as early as possible so that they can change the well hearts and minds of those people and uh, plant seeds of doubt uh, to make sure that their well sometimes extreme ideas are not developed further. The line between radicalization and violent extremism is thin, but there is a huge difference between thinking to do something and actually doing it. Uh, there is a huge difference between thinking it's okay to commit acts of violent extremism in Europe and actually doing that, planning it and executing it. The question whether radicalization is caused by nature or nurture, it's a very interesting question, but my answer is very clear. There is no such thing as a terrorist DNA. Currently, a lot of focus is on the foreign fighters, youngsters going to Syria and Iraq and fight there. That's quite an amazing number of people, uh, close to 3,000. But let's not forget that, for instance, in Norway, not so long ago, somebody like Breivik killed a lot of people. So right extremism, that's quite a serious problem. De-radicalizing people always starts by planting seeds of doubt so that they themselves start to doubt whether the radical ideology is true. Just going to them and saying, no, you're not right, or all those people uh, that radicalized you, they're wrong, that will not work. Discussing with them why they have these ideas and, and asking them to explain these ideas. Then you can challenge them and that's when the process starts. In the coming years, two things will happen. The world will become more interconnected. Um, events abroad in the Middle East or on the other side of the globe and ideas developed over there will reach us much easier and faster than before. Uh, so that will promote radicalization. On the other hand, what will also happen is that initiatives such as the RAN will develop and improve and allow us to prevent radicalization even better. Mm -hmm.